Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the error analysis for the bomb calorimetry experiment. So in the data analysis video, we discussed the determination of the temperature rise, how we would look at our temperature curve that looks something like this. You have your data points. And you determine your point C, your point A, your point B, and then you use the points here to get your R1 slope, your points here to get your R2 slope. So you have your R2, your R1. But the key is that all we really need to do is determine the uncertainty in the pre and post fire slopes. And then those slopes will contain all the error of points A and point C. And then uh, from there, that's all we really need to know in terms of our error analysis. So what we're going to do when we determine T, we want to determine the uncertainty in T, the error in our temperature rise. We're just going to propagate in the errors for the error in the slope for R1 and the error for the slope for R2. So we're just going to take the partial derivative of our equation for T with respect to R1. And so then take the derivative of the equation with respect to R1, so that would just be B minus A. And then take the partial derivative of T with respect to R2, which is equal to C minus B. And so remember then we're gonna take this, we're gonna square this term times the uncertainty in that parameter squared, and then add to it this value here times the error in that value squared as well. So just apply your differential error equation to determine the uncertainty in your temperature rise. So then from there, we have two sort of error analysis to discuss. The other, the, the two would be determining W. In fact, let me skip ahead to this slide here. So when we're determining W, we had given in the handout, if you recall, a precise value for h with an uncertainty. So we know an uncertainty in h, our mass uncertainty is 0 .001, 0 0.0001 gram. So that's 0.1 milligram. And so we determine that mass uncertainty here, and then our delta t that we determined from the previous slide. So, and then we're not going to assume any errors in E1 or E3 for our correction terms. And so we're just going to assume these three errors here for our equation. So what we will do is take the partial derivative of W with respect to H, the partial derivative of W with respect to T, partial derivative of W with respect to mass. And then we'll take each of those terms, square them, and times multiply that by the uncertainty in that variable squared. And then add all of those up, ultimately take the square root, that'll help us get the uncertainty in W. Now another thing that's important for this experiment is doing multiple trials because if we do one trial, we probably would never pick up a human error any other way other than by doing a second trial. So when we do two or three trials in this experiment, what we're really doing is testing our ability to replicate the experiment. And the way I would try to replicate the experiment is think about what your uncertainty is for W, maybe multiply that by two, and about 95% of your trials should be within about those bounds. If you do two or three trials and you're finding you're not within those bounds, you might be making some human errors that we need to correct and improve our technique and then try again. So this is an experiment that we just have to be really careful to repeat the experiment as um, consistently as possible. And then usually we'll obtain data that is likewise very consistent. Okay, so then the last step would be, um, let's go backwards. Okay, so back to the slide here. So we have our enthalpy of combustion. So once we determine W, and then we want to determine the enthalpy of combustion in naphthalene or some other substance, what we're going to do here is determine its T and delta T, M and delta M we know, and then W when we know the uncertainty in W now. We can propagate those in. So we're just going to do the D, H, D, T, the D, H, D, W, and the D, H, dm and then we'll just square those multiply with the uncertainty of those variables add them up also take the square root that'll help us determine the enthalpy of combustion of our compound 
Okay, so that's the basic uh, thought process behind the error analysis on this experiment.